plugins. Digital Performer has always shipped with very high quality plugins. We have 64 bit processing, surround sound plugins, mastering plugins, convolution reverbs, and in DP version 8, we have 15 new high quality plugins. We're using convolution modeling and a process called physics modeling that allows us to emulate hardware units, classic vintage hardware units emulated as plugins inside DP. Let's take a look. Switch over to my mixing board and I've got some uh, backing tracks set up here. And I'm gonna solo up the kick drum. I've got a bunch of drum uh, tracks here. Just microphones in front of a drum set. No processing going on. When we listen to that solo kick track, you're gonna hear a little bit of bleed from the other tracks. Only an audio engineer wants to sit and listen to a kick drum. Now let me hear another five minutes of that. All right, let's <laughs> see if we can enhance that kick drum a little bit. This is the sub kick plugin, new in DP8. You ever go into a studio and you see that somebody who's used a small speaker as a microphone? Maybe they got a five inch or an eight inch speaker and they put it in front of a kick drum or say a bass guitar cabinet, and that speaker is working as a microphone but it's got a very large diaphragm and it's able to capture a very low frequency wave coming off of the drum or the bass guitar cabinet. That's what sub kick is all about. I've got a, a blend control or a mix control. When it's all the way to the left, we're hearing only the dry original signal. As I turn that to the right, you're going to hear that sub kick element. All right, so now we're only hearing the sub kick sound. We've got a resonance control, pitch control. Let's go find the resonant frequency of the Anaheim Convention Center. This screen is shaking there. Got a drive control. So you dial in the sound that you want, you tune it up. We'll go back to our dry sound. Bring in that sub kick to just enhance the bottom end of our kick drum. So the new sub kick plug-in. Alright, that's on the kick drum. What about the rest of the drum set? I'll bring the rest of the drums into the solo group. So let's see if we can make the rest of the drum set match uh, how good that kick drum is sounding. I've got a stereo subgroup here that I'm sending the drums through. And on that subgroup, I have our new dynamic equalizer. This is really two effects inside one plugin. This is a multi-band equalizer, and each of those EQ bands has its own compressor. So if I choose the low shelf filter, then I see compression controls for the low shelf. I'm going to turn the threshold all the way up so the compressor's not doing anything. And we'll bring in that low frequency band, that shelving filter. A lot of low end, really out of control. Let's tighten that up. We drop down the threshold. Now you can see the gain reduction both here and in the metering over there. So now I have precise control of booster cut and then the dynamics within that frequency band. Go to the high shelf filter, bring that in. Again, we set how much gain reduction we want. Let's go find a, uh, a mid-band EQ. We'll solo that mid-band EQ. Really dial in on the sound that we want to find. How much compression do we want on that frequency? All right, bring it back into the full bandwidth mix. Get right to the part, here we go. All right, no multi-band uh, dynamic equalizer. Bring it in and now we've tightened up the sound and made that drum set really sparkle. Okay, so we got some good sounding drums now. How about the bass? Well, I got a, a keyboard bass here. We'll solo that up. It's a Korg synthesizer going through a guitar amplifier and there's a mic on the guitar. That's the bleed that you hear. But it's a monophonic sound. Let's uh, make that a bit more interesting with our ensemble chorus. Now this is a, a two-channel modulation processor, two independent modulators, although they can be linked. So I can link those controls. So delay, width, rate, symmetry of the uh, modulation waveform, different types of waveforms to work with, phase control. So we've taken that simple monophonic sound and run it through a stereo chorus and widened out the image and made that just a little bit more of an interesting sound. That's our keyboard bass, but there's also an electric bass guitar track on this, uh, this recording. And this bass guitar was recorded direct. We can help that out. This is live room B. 
And Live Room B does uh, uh, convolution modeling of speaker cabinets, microphones, and acoustic spaces. All right, so let's go check out a preset. Uh, well, we'll start with uh, Live Room B turned off. All right, now let's bring in four 10, four 10 inch speakers, dynamic mic, condenser mic, distance microphones, a mixer for the microphones. The microphones can be split off to their own channels in the DP mixing board. Hand controls, tone controls, pre-delay controls so we can vary the distance of the microphone to the speaker cabinet. How about a, a single 18 inch speaker with a sub, sub kick microphone? Big, deep reggae sound. Maybe you're a fan of the old Ampeg SVTs. Eight 10 inch speakers, we call it the refrigerator. Or check this out, a single 15 inch speaker, if we listen carefully, it sounds like reverb going on in there. And that's because uh, we've turned up the, uh, the distance microphones here, but uh, now we got a, a big room. Let's make the room a little smaller. So with the decay control here, again, this is convolution modeling at the ambience, so the microphones are still turned up, the distance mics, but it's a smaller room. Remember the old uh, Sgt. Pepper's uh, record with the Paul beautiful Paul McCartney bass sounds? You can hear that Ampeg B15 cabinet microphone about five or six feet away, the sound bouncing off the wooden floor into the microphone. You can dial in exactly the tone that you want for your bass player. Give the bass player a little love. All right, so we got drums, we got bass. How about some guitar? Ladies and gentlemen, the world's most patient guitar player over here. Now he gets to have a little bit of fun. And I need some screen real estate, so let's move everything over like this. And let's follow the plumbing. We got a guitar. The guitar is plugged into a patch cord. The patch cord is then uh, plugged into a Motu Z-Box. The Z-Box is an impedance adapter. So as far as that guitar is concerned, it thinks it's plugged into a Fender guitar amplifier. The pickups have the correct impedance load on them. Then we go from the Z-Box into our 896 Mark III audio interface. The signal goes up into Digital Performer through DP and whatever plugins we're running back out to the interface and out to the speakers. So Dave can play his guitar live through Digital Performer. Now we're running our entire demo on a laptop computer. And I gig with this. I play keyboards and guitar in a band. And my gig rig, what I take to, to the gig, is a USB keyboard, my guitar, my laptop computer, and a half rack space audio interface. I use the Motu, Motu Ultralight. So I get all my keyboard sounds out of the computer. I get all my guitar processing out of the computer. I don't have to carry around amplifiers and pedal boards. I can plug right into the PA system and get exactly the sound I need. What does a guitar player want? A cool amplifier. So this is a physics model of the Vox AC30. Physics model means that we took the original circuitry. And you know, the, the Vox AC30, they actually changed how their tone controls work. And we have both models, the modern and the vintage tone controls for that AC30. So this is the software version. A beautiful tremolo. Top boost. This is the amplifier that the Edge uses in U2. Very classic sound. Now, get yourself an amplifier. Well, the amplifier needs to go through a cool cabinet. So you remember Live Room B for the bass? Well, this is Live Stage. And this is a super efficient plugin, very easy on the CPU. And it's doing convolution modeling of guitar cabinets, microphones, and ambience. So let's put that Vox AC30 through a single eight inch speaker. Off axis microphone. Distance microphone. Mic from the back of the cabinet. Or how about uh, we go to a 212 open back cabinet. Mic right on axis, off axis. I happen to know that Dave really likes that uh, classic Marshall cabinet, the 412 closed back. I think we're going to go with the off axis mic this time. I, I kind of like that tone. All right, so we've got our amplifier, we've got our cabinet. But you know, we're not limited to the Vox AC30. DP8 is also shipping with the Soloist. And this is a, a, a physics model of the Mesa Boogie Dual Rectifier, which is a three channel amplifier. And this is Mesa Boogie's version of a clean channel. Now we got 
that normal vintage game. A modern high game. So whether you're looking for vintage amps or modern amps, DP8's got them. All right, so I got a choice of amplifiers, got my cabinets. Now it's time for a little spring reverb. This is thing, uh, spring a bob <laughs> Sounds like a Dr. Seuss thing. Yeah, spring a bob This is convolution modeling of spring reverbs. So how about uh, three short springs? Three long springs. Two long springs. So three different models of uh, spring reverb tanks. Now we're going to get into some stop boxes. So here is a physics model of the Dallas Rangemaster. Anybody ever heard of the Dallas Rangemaster? You've heard of it. No? Anybody ever heard of Eric Clapton? Eric Clapton used the Dallas Rangemaster. A lot of these guitar players in the late 60s, early 70s, they're looking for that, that creamy distortion tone. And if you bought a fuzz box in 1969, it sounded like a can of bees. So if you really wanted to, if, if you really wanted that smooth, creamy distortion, what guitar players were doing back then would they get a, a preamplifier before their guitar amp so they could overdrive the input into the guitar amp and get their distortion from the tubes of the guitar amplifier. And the Dallas Rangemaster is basically a lead switch. It's a high pass filter, so it's providing preamplifier gain with an emphasis on the high end. So we'll start with it off. So we'll call that our lead switch. Now we're going to follow that with a compressor. Remember the old MXR Dynacomp? This is our Dyna Squash. Infinity Limiting. MXR sold this as a sustain pedal. Brings out all the detail of the, the playing. You go out, you have a bite to eat, you come back, it's still going. Now, these old pedals, these original pedals, they used 9-volt batteries. They had very high impedance inputs. They were really noisy, and all of those problems are gone. So if you want to use the, uh, the, the model of the MXR Dynacomp on your snare drum, on your vocal track, you can do that. Very high quality effects, not just for guitar. All right, so we're going to follow the uh, compressor with uh, some modulation effects. Here's our model of the MXR Phase 90. A uh, well-known uh, player was Donald Fagan from Steely Dan. He ran his Fender Rhodes through the, uh, the Phase 90. This is our analog phaser. Here's the stun setting, the kill setting. Captain Kirk used a mean phaser. Now, if you're really into these vintage analog effects, you're saying, okay, well, what about electroharmonics? So let's go get ourselves the Electroharmonic Small Stone. This is the Motu Clear Pebble. Okay, Donald Fagan used an MXR pedal. Who used Electroharmonics? How about Keith Richards with the Rolling Stones on the Some Girls record? This is the original stuff. If you're looking for that sound, you got it. All right, so there's a, there's a couple of phase shifters for you. How about a little bit of an analog delay? Remember the old uh, Memory Man? This is a, a DOD analog delay. Hear how the pitch shifts as I move the delay time? Just like the original. All right, we'll turn up the note repeat. Just like the original hardware. Only clean bucket brigade delay technology with no noise. All right, so that's our analog delay. And one more plug in to show you it's our analog flanger, and this is a physics model of the uh, Electroharmonics Electric Mistress. Classic flanger pedal. So let's put these all into musical context. We're going to play back some backing tracks. Dave's going to play along over top through these effects. We're going to start off with the uh, the Vox AC30 going through the live stage cabinet. 
and then uh, as the track plays along, we put some automation in there, and you're going to see these various effects turn on and off, so you can hear them. It'll be pretty obvious what you're listening to, and you can hear them in a musical context. You ready, Dave? Here we go. AC30 and a cap it. High top booster and spring of a bob. Dinah squash and analog station. Dave Wood, helping us out. Dave, I think you got famous in that one, man. All right, I have one more thing to show you in today's demonstration. I told you I had a big surprise for you at the end of the demo today. And uh, we've been talking about Digital Performer version 8, and I've been showing it to you on my uh, Macintosh laptop computer. Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to present Digital Performer running on Windows. There will be time for you to deal emotionally with all of this, but right now you have to get your shit together. So there we go. Ladies, I'd like to thank uh, Ed Shermer, the composer. Uh, this is a feature film, Abduction. Now, I have to be honest here, Ed did the composition for this movie soundtrack on a Macintosh on DP version 7, but he let us use the file, so we brought that over to Windows into Digital Performer version 8. Digital Performer 8 is identical on Macintosh or Windows. Report your files back and forth if you need to do that. And uh, let's just get into some of these details here. We're running Digital Performer on Windows 7. We're running it on uh, Hewlett Packard computers. Big thank you to Hewlett Packard for uh, lending us a computer. We've got it running out on these uh, satellite stations here. A few bits of information for you. Shipping for both 32 and 64 bit on both Macintosh and Windows platform. On Windows, we're supporting VST and Rewire protocol for your plugins. DP8 is shipping for Macintosh and Windows in the same box, and that leaves one question when? Spring 2012, really any day, as soon as we can get it out the door, but you're looking at something that is basically done. Digital Performer 8 on Macintosh and on Windows. Very proud for that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to do another demo in about half an hour or so. This is Dave, the famous Dave.
I'm the less famous Dave. We're Motu. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful show.